Hey yo, make sure y'all go subscribe to that Gen Pop TV band from St. Laz page. It's all type of exclusive episodes and missing episodes. I told you, YouTube was on some new funny stuff, so I had to move about 100 episodes over to Gen Pop TV. I got about 30 of them so far uploaded. I got another 70 coming. You heard? Lives that's banned, all of that. You heard? So make sure y'all go join. I done had like 150 new subscribers in the last 24 hours already. It's serious out here. Shout out to the God Black Knowledge, one of the most legendary Brooklyn entities that ever walked Brooklyn soil. You heard we doing this new series called the Sumner series. You feel me? But we going to break down the history of Sumner projects, which is going to include a lot of Brooklyn history that you never knew about that you may have heard bits and pieces of but now we hearing it from the horse's mouth you heard so shout out to the whole bed star shout out to the whole Brooklyn you heard shout out to them 80s boys them boys that came up in the 80s you heard that made the blueprint for the streets for the next 20 30 years afterwards you feel what I'm saying we don't know enough about them Y'all young boys out there, y'all don't know enough about them. For now, I'm a, we're going to hold off on the Jay-Z. We're going to hold off on the on the Tracy Morgan joint. We're going to get into it, right? We're going to blend into it. I can give you the story of what really, really got my name resonating and really, really made dudes from all around take notice me on the, on the hammer work. You know what I mean? And that transpired through the Sumner the Bushwick Wars. You know what I mean? The wars that we had with the dudes from Bushwick Projects when we was in Eastern District. What year you talking about that was, like with the with the with the Bushwick stuff, Bushwick um, projects? For like 83, 84, 85 was the um would have been the, around that time would have been the, the Sumner Bushwick War because we, you know, we was in Eastern District. We was from Sumner, and you, we used to walk to school in the Eastern District. Just you know, get the most before we get into the actual story. And uh, we had to come through Bushwick projects to get to Eastern District. And um, you know, we used to walk through the projects. You know, we was wild, rowdy. You know what I mean? We go through this sometimes, violent and drunk and shit hollering at their girls. That was the main thing, how a lot of this shit started. The fact that we was bagging the they students, one of the little mans that was talking to one of the girls that one of the major dudes from Bushwick at the time probably had a crush on the lights, whatever, whatever. What they led to a couple of fights broke out back and forth or whatever. And then it elevated from the fight and to the to the hands. So right. Um so that would have been like 80, 84, or between 83 to 85, something like that. Dudes was blaming at each other after school or something? Uh, sometimes they didn't make it to after school. Only we had to walk through there to get to school. So, if, you know what I mean? And walking through there, some of the niggas, all right, so before we even get there, before we got to guns, all right, so look, okay, so we could do it like this. from. So, and, and putting it in perspective, in maybe 83, right, into the early part of 84, it probably wasn't no hammers involved. It was probably just fights, raises and shit, you know what I mean, big group fights, whatever. But when the guns came in around, it would have had to have been around 84, 85, when the guns came in to the situation, that's when it really fucked. And it, it up so much to the point where how I really got the situation jumping and, and resonating with my name ringing was, you know, involved a Tech Nine, a ninja suit, and a tree. You know what I mean? A 36 shot tech. 30, I keep saying 36. I'm thinking of I'm thinking of something else. A ninja suit, a tree. My man, he had the 30, the 30 gauge, the 30, 30 shotgun. And um, a couple other cats, they had a couple hammers and, you know, we went there, did what we did, you know, I clomped up in the tree and sat in the tree with the tech knives, with the ninja suit on for three, four hours, waiting on niggas and, 
when it came, jumped out that tree with that tech spitting in that ninja suit. And that did it for me in Brooklyn. From that point on, my shit shot through the roof. From that beef, from that one episode, the major said, yo, I heard the nigga swung down the vine. There wasn't no vines and all that. <laughs> it was, obviously, that's how I tell you about the industry. It was, I was able to climb up to the first few branches, which was, had the leaves and all that. And I, and I linked up against that and I just stood there you know what I mean? In the tree, blended in with the black, all black ninja suit and the black 5211 Reeboks. It's facts. Hey, what you mean? In, you talking about in Sumner and they was coming through Sumner? No. Oh. In, we went into their projects. We went into Bushwick. And I knew where they was at and where they would come from. So we, you know, we had this thing where we would lay and wait on these for days, hours, whatever. In under cars, in parked cars, stolen cars, hiding, and we would wait. And until we saw the target and then we did what we did but on this particular night you know i mean i was furious and i'm going to tell you the story what made me so furious and what made me say you know all all bets was off you know we getting crazy now and crazy was climbing up into that tree with that ninja suit on in bushwick in their projects climbing in a tree hiding in a tree with the with the tech knob. My man had the 30 gay shotgun hiding behind the van bench because he was too fat and he couldn't climb the tree. He wasn't trying to climb the tree with the 30 gay shotgun. And, um, and, uh, yeah. And, and all this, you know, there was nothing but fire coming from that tree. And then I jumped, like, and I jumped down. Fell, jumped. I jumped, fell. I'm going to tell it like I jumped, but I kind of fell a little bit too. But that thing was barking the whole way. And, and it was, it was, it was crazy. So, you know, them niggas even, those dudes rather, even made the legend bigger because they was like, oh, a motherfucker jumped out the tree and all black with a monkey suit on with a machine gun spent. It wasn't a machine gun. It was a tech nine. You know how them shits was infamous for jamming. And I kept full. I always kept, because you was always, uh, we was always taught, don't empty, always keep some for the runoff in case you get in a tight situation with superheroes trying to follow you and the order boys box you in you shoot your way out it's right so from that point on it was like whoever that little black nigga is that nigga's out of control he jumping out of trees on niggas with smoking machine gun but you know how you know how the story gonna go is how the story going but i'm just giving you the backdrop of and, and what you said was it that had you so furious that you went up in so that what tree? happened was so I'm telling you, son, all of this shit is so much, this shit is so actual fact in real life that it would sound unreal and it would sound fake like it was a movie. So what happened was, I told you we was going back and forth with these dudes so we'll worry and get to it how we get to it for years, for like a year or two, going back for a fight with these dudes, whatever. They got their hands on guns around the same time we got our hands on guns. So it was a couple of instances where, you know, some shootouts. We went down there shooting, boom, boom, boom. They came up to our projects shooting, boom, boom, boom. So one day we was on Sumner Avenue. We was on, but they renamed the Marcus Garvey, but we always going to call it Sumner Avenue. We was on Sumner Avenue, going to a Chinese restaurant. It was me and one, two, three, four, four, five other dudes. And we was going in the restaurant, and one dude was like, yo, he with them bush with niggas right there in the car. So... We go in the restaurant and me and my homie, the same homie that I'm talking about is so relevant in all my life stories. But then, bro, you gonna see why that this dude was the way he was. And this is the same dude that, with the situation with Jay-Z and this is the same dude with the situation with Tracy Morgan. And this is the same dude with a lot of other situations. This dude was a, a serial killer, bro. There's no other way to put it. Like he was just, that was him. So, you know, I, he had a joint. He was the only, I didn't have my gun on me. He had a joint, a little Trey Dukes, like a, 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 I don't know how many shots there, but it was a Trey Dukes. It was a pat pat. It wasn't none of the big shit that we used to have because we was we was in the projects. And we just went up to the chat, to the ad with some Chinese food. We spotted the niggas in the, in the car. My man told us, so we looked at each other. I'm like, yo, what you want to do? Like, you got the joint on He like, yeah, I'm like, yo, let's go get the niggas. So, Boom, long story short, we jumped in the car, chased them. They turned down Decal Avenue. This is where it get gangster. And everybody from that era will remember this story and remember that day. 
we in a stolen car. If we fall deep, we fall deep in the stolen. I'm dropping. My man got the joint. He in the passenger seat. We 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 veering down on them dudes from Bush. They turned down decal. We turned down decal behind them. When they seen us speeding behind them coming, they probably didn't have no joints because they took off and, and was running. So it's the chase down decal avenue. Top speeds. 80, 90 miles an hour better, running red lights, swerving through traffic, and my man sitting. So imagine the window rolled down, right? The passenger window. He's outside the whole window, sitting, his ass is sitting on the on the window, on the door, where the window will roll up and down. That he's sitting on the door, he was left handed, so it was perfect for him. And he's leaning over the top of the car, shooting at their car. The car in front of us, the bush is. He's blowing out the back windows. We we he, we going in, but they swerving and dipping and diving, and I'm swerving and dipping and diving, and I'm trying to crash him. And he had the little gun, but it wasn't. It was blowing out windows, but it wasn't the big shit. So we chasing these niggas all the way down detail. He we jumps back in the car, reloads, jumps back out the car. All this is in like broad day, so I'm like midday. The chase down. We chased the niggas down decal all the way to the precinct in LG. It's a precinct right across the street from LG Projects. They, we chased them all, shooting at him and all that. He couldn't, I'm trying to, you know, hit the tire stunt. He's like, I can't, they keep swerving. I'm like, we'll blow them niggas' heads off. And it was like, yo, you couldn't see nobody driving. It was like the car was driving by itself because nobody heads were showing because of making news that if his head was visible, it was getting taken off. So how, whoever that was driving, he got the wheel. That's a fact. Whoever that was that was driving, I still don't know to this day, whoever that was that was driving the niggas, he had the wheel because we couldn't see him, but he, I guess he had enough that he could see what he was doing and he made it, swerving all the way down to the precinct. Them niggas... You, because the precinct is a one way, class and avenue coming down. He turned up the one way and, and they crossed the car all into the precinct, jumped out the car and ran into the precinct. And we right there at the end, where, you know, where they turned off and we still on peak out, yelling at telling them how much pussies they are, how much we gonna murder them and bitch ass niggas run to the police. They can't say that we murdered them, they call out. And then the police came out, saw us, and we spilled it off. Then they tried to chase us, but we dipped on them and we was gone. But that was, so now after that, that must have enraged them so much that they looked so pussy with us chasing them down. I don't know how they did it, but they found out where I lived at, the building that I lived in. You know what I mean? They found out the building that I lived in and the floor that I lived on in that building. But they didn't know the door. They didn't know the door that I, which was my apartment. So what they did was they wrote in magic markers throughout the entire first floor of the building on every wall and by every door and all by the elevator and all by the stairs talking about how they was going to kill me. Now as we know where you live at, bitch ass nigga, when we catch you, we going to kill you and all sorts of goofy shit. And the wild shit was I must have had just missed them dudes because I came in on a late night that night. And when I came in and I saw all of that shit in the building, like, 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 I, I can't even, I can't even explain the feeling that came over me. One, it was a feeling of, damn, if I would have came in this building while they was right now, I'm pretty sure that they was strapped up. They might have, you know what I mean? It might have been a situation that I might not have been able to get out of. You know what I mean? Because they was in my building on the first floor. And if I would have unknowingly walked in the building without seeing them, they would have had the advantage and they could have did me dirty. That was one, right? The second thing was that, yo, man, my motherfucking moms live here. You know what I mean? And she see all of this shit and all my neighbors on the floor. You know what I mean? So, so my, you know, I had my mom see the shit. She flipping out yelling and they're raised and paranoid and scared. Oh, they gonna kill you. They know where you live and, and they gonna end up killing you and all this wild shit. Hard and self, one second, bro. I gotta tell them to stop making so much noise. Hold on. So you said your mom's just paranoid saying she thinking they gonna kill you and all of that? 
there is because she like, yo, they know where you live at now. They know where we live at. So, you know what I mean? You you know, you putting everybody in jeopardy and everybody in danger. And, you know, I had one of them moms that, you know, she was a young mother. She had me when she was like 18, 19. So growing up, you know what I mean? She was still, you know, young and in a little wild, a little bit of street. You know what I mean? That's some of where I got it from. And, um, you know, she was like, yo, how were you playing in these streets? And I was it's, it's hitting too close to home because now they waiting in your building for you. So now that was a no-no for me because, like I said, I'm not. I wasn't feeling like I was Mr. Invincible because I know that anybody could get it at any given time if the situation presents itself. Anybody could get it. The toughest motherfucker, you know what I mean, can get it from the softest dude if he get caught lacking. So that right there took me over the edge. In terms of all right, now I gotta now I'm gonna make a statement. I, I, I came right in my building and all that. How many places you said they wrote that same shit on? So yeah, six apartments or seven apartments to each floor in my building. So they wrote because they didn't know which one was mine, but they, they had the floor right though. So they wrote on every door and they wrote on every wall space next to the doors and they wrote on. On the elevator, on the outside of the elevator, on the first floor, and on the inside of the elevator, <clears throat> and all it was. So I'm like, damn! It took them a while to write that. Word, oh, right. they had to be in there for like a half, at, at, at least minimum. But it was the late night because I, I, nobody said they seen them doing it, but they did it. You know what I mean? And again, my thoughts was, damn! I could have walked into an ambush. One, my mom's or something. You know what I mean? Or my brother, something could have been coming out the crib or something. Then they would have saw that and they could have, you know what I mean? They could have scored two. And then three, that was just too close for comfort. So I said, all right, now we're going to turn up. And and then, you know, that was the, and then from there, you know, I made history. And and, and from that point on, motherfuckers was coming to check for black dollars. Like, yo, the older cats, the older heads that was running the hoods and all that. Like, yo, this little dude over there, young dude busting his gun crazy. He crazy, but he jumping out of trees and flying out of flying cars. They hanging on. So the dude that I'm referring to, my name was Black Knowledge. His name was Knowledge B. They called him Charlie, but his name was Knowledge also. But it was Black Knowledge and Knowledge B. So it was always the two knowledges together doing shit. So a lot of the shit that he did, they would attribute to me and put it on me because they, they would just hear the name knowledge and they would say, oh, that was black knowledge from something. But it really, sometimes it really wasn't. Knowledge B, Charlie, he was from Tonkis. But, you know, we were so close in proximity that they couldn't differentiate. So whenever they heard a story about knowledge, they didn't say, oh, all the time, unless they actually saw us, they wouldn't say, yo, it was black knowledge or it was knowledge B. It was just, yo, knowledge did such and such, knowledge did such and such. So a lot of times I was getting flack and, and getting in the balls and beats over shit that I had nothing to do with. I didn't do it. I know what I did, all the shit that I did and the work I put in, but some of the shit that was coming at me w was not me. Like with the situation with the home and all that shit. It's like, you know, yo, bro, I heard you wrong. No, bro, I didn't do that. I didn't do that. I wouldn't have did that because of the affiliations with my little man's life. I didn't do that. I didn't have nothing to do with that. But those is my niggas. Those is my people. Those is my homies. Those are the dudes that's on my team. So, you know, a lot of times I was able to address and straighten out some situations with respect to some of the things that my team of, my team of hitters was doing. You know what I mean? Because we was all able to check each other, you know, because there was nobody... Uh, above anybody else in my, in, in my team of individuals we all respected each other uh, equally because we all was hitters so so we was all able to you know because we came up from the sandbox so we was able to we had a checks and balance system where we was able to check one another if you know what I mean on the outside on the face we, we ride but behind closed doors we, we checked each other so that you know what I mean for future situations or whatever you know, we, we, we dudes will be able to move accordingly. But you got to be able to check your peoples, homie. Nobody's uncheckable. And that's a, that's what happens a lot of times where sh shit runs so rapid because nobody feels uh, like they're in a, either a position to check somebody else or, or the people that's 
that needs to be checked feel like they're uncheckable. Nobody's uncheckable, homie. And you, you, if you got dudes around you that can't tell you that your shit stink, homie, and you need to be checked, then you don't need those type of dudes around you. If you got a bunch of yes men around you, don't like you never know when you go, you gonna never know when you slipping because you gonna think you always got the answers and you always know the right way because the people around you are are fearful to to let you know you right now your shit stink, homie, and you out of pocket. You know, we didn't have that type of problems in, in, in my clique of individuals because, you know, we all we, we all checked each other uh, privately, not publicly, privately. Publicly, we rode in any situation against whoever. But privately, we was like, damn, bro, you know, you, you know, that's an unnecessary situation. You know, you shouldn't have did that. You shouldn't have did that, whatever, whatever. But getting back to... You know, those are more stories, but getting back to that situation, like, you know, after them dudes wrote on my joint, you know, we had guns at the time. You know, I mean, I probably had a couple of knives, a fifth, 357 long, had the Joker gun, the Batman Joker gun. Back then, I had the three pound with the long 12 inch nose, shit, pulling that shit out. Little four, 15, 16 year old dude, one of the biggest hammers in Brooklyn on the revolver tip. And, uh, but that, so I felt that, that wasn't enough. You know what I mean? I said, nah, I need something like a street sweep or something that, the, that I don't think they had them then, but my man's, my big homies there in Tonkin, they had, they had Max and Tex. So I'm like, you know, I went to them, went to my big girls, I'm like, yo, listen, homie, I'm going in. They violated, they got a little too close for comfort. We got it. All I need is that joint. That holds a lot, and my, he gave me he gave me two choices: the Tech Nine with the air holes, and the Tech Nine without the air holes. Took the one without the air holes because the one with the air holes, I I'm unfamiliar with it, and it looked a, it was a little bit more updated, and I, I wasn't un, I was familiar with. It. So I was like, give me that right there, the traditional Tech Nine, the jamming shit. But I'm familiar with that. I can rock with that. And, uh, and let me get that ninja suit that you got in your closet. So the ninja suit, now let's, let me explain something to you. I'm not a plagiarist. I don't take credit for shit that I didn't come up with or whatever. And then when, when I do talk about something that I did, whatever, I'm always going to give just credit where it's deserved. My big homie put me on to the ninja suit. Like, yo, and I thought that was the dumbest shit in the world. We had all sorts of scat and shit when we go to put work in wigs and dread wigs and mailman suits and all sorts of other different apparel that we could throw on to you know to get us closer to the opposition and um when he, you know i remember when he first showed me that ninja suit i was like boy that's the most goofiest dumbest shit in the world fuck me ain't chinese <laughs> and, and i laughed at him he was like oh, look chocolate you bugging for that this this gonna put some work in and they not gonna be able to little shoot this is one of the best things to, to to conceal your identity. So I remembered that. Now when I go to this same dude to get that heat that I need to put that pain in the way I would put it in, I said, yo, by the way, let me get that ninja suit and and a pair of those black re I didn't have no black Reeboks. I he, he gave me the whole suit. So he dressed me up. To, to keep it a bean, my homie dressed me up. He gave me the sneakers. The ninja suit, the fucking, and the technology, the main show was a full clip. Both of them texts is the same exact shit. It just looked completely different with that cooler attached to right. it with that, so with the holes. You know about the cooler, I call it the air hose. I call it the air hose, you call it the cooler. Yeah, it just make the, it cools the gun down so that you could shoot more. That other shit without the cooler, that shit get burning hot. Right, and so that's what it was. That was like, so that's funny too because that's the story is when I when I finish and when I finish with that putting that word and screw that I, I threw that on the moon to me I threw that hot joint back in my body in my waist and on my leg and all that to get up out of dogs with it and that shit burnt seared skin off my leg side of my nuts paws and all that that and shit be on that shit be on fire after them thirty two after them twenty eight shots. You know, like I said, I, I give credit where credit was due. I didn't come up with the ninja suit, but I, I, I definitely made it famous because I, before then, I didn't hear about, no, definitely not jumping out no tree. 
definitely not jumping out no tree. And 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 after that, it got real quiet in terms of that beat because the dudes realized the seriousness of it and the, the lengths that we was willing to take it to in order to secure the win. And y'all was all still in Eastern District at the time? Yeah, facts. Facts. And um, yeah, that was a that was a heavy beef. That was a heavy beef. Dudes, dudes got, you know, dudes got dudes got dudes got touched on both sides. It's not just to say one side ran over the other and all that. Nah, they was young and up and coming like we were. And they were out to make a name for themselves like we were. And you know, they they was they was letting their things go too. They was coming, because I told you, they came to my hood. So they had to come to my hood ready for action if they writing in my building. And if they blaming and, and, and knocking shit down. So yeah, you know, it, you know you know how the boards go, bro. It's, it's, it's back and forth, back and forth, until until either motherfuckers side the place, either motherfuckers go to jail and get pinched, or, or the right motherfuckers get knocked off. Because when we was coming up, there was no such thing as a white flag. We never, ever, in the history of our wars, raised, raised or raised the white flag ever. And all of the beefs, all of the aggressive transactions that we partook in, we never raised the white flag, never. We'd have rather died before we raised the white flag of surrender. You know what I mean? It was because the way we was taught, you know, the way I was taught coming up, it was, it was, it was, it was like, you know what I mean? No, you know, you never surrender. You might not win every every battle, but a war raging on. So if you get your opportunity to hit, you hit hard and you make your presence felt. And you 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 know, you do what you do for not just that particular individual sex and arts you deal with, but for everybody else that's gonna come after them. Because you wanna give them a reason to pause have a second thought about you know what I mean fucking with you and yours and you and your people because they know everything that's going with it so is that a generational thing between um Bushwick and Sumner like is it always problems between Bushwick and Sumner like after that in the 90s and stuff like that was it always problems with them dudes with other generations um yeah, I, the 90s I was locked up, so I'm not sure the 80s, 90s, after that I was locked up, but from the stories that I've heard, those wars you know, because it was so entrenched and so heavy, and then you know how it goes, bro, the animosity and the dislike builds up and turns into somewhat of hatred, especially if, you know, if it's man downs involved, you know, that, that goes on forever, so in some people's eyes, so yeah, um, it, it, it did carry over, I can say for a fact, but I know that it, not, maybe not necessarily to the extent the way we was going at it, but it definitely transcended into you it, it pocket, pocket, pocket uh, riff raps and pocket situations where it'd be, you know what I mean, you hear about a couple of dudes from over here, some bush of dudes coming through. You know what I mean? With the younger generation, and they got beef with the dudes from the younger generation from my hood, and they coming through, hitting that dudes, hitting shit up. And yeah, so yeah, that that shit was, yeah, that shit was still going on. I can't say for sure whether or not it's a direct cause or result of our situations, but I, I would be naive to say that our situations it, it played some part in that. You know what I mean? Because you know, every every hood puts on, bro. You, in every hood, you have standout dudes that would be like hood celebrities that put on, that put on heavy for their hood and, 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 and how they wreck, you know what I mean? They hood. So in every project, you got you got dudes. So there's no projects that you could just completely run over, even if you think it was the softest projects in this section. It's still dudes in there that's going to put on and that's going to put on like heavy hitters just as good as they get brought to them they gonna give it back so you know this is the era of this was the era of putting on homie you know back then in the 80s you, you had to put on you really had to put on
Hey yo, you love what I'm doing on this channel? Feel free to send me a Cash App donation. That's the Cash App right there. Gen Pop Fam, you heard? Get at me, Z Lord.